Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Makers of Minnesota podcast, where we talk to cool people doing cool things. And there's nothing cooler than food to me. And I'm here today with Vanessa Drews, and she is with a company called Cheesecake Funk. And Vanessa, I saw your cheesecake in an Elizabeth Reese post probably like three years ago. And it was this just gorgeous, like three or four inches high cheesecake that had a beautiful wall around it. And then it had all this whipped cream on the top. It just looked like fantastic. And then I kept hearing about you and I've since had the opportunity to read your story. And I always did kind of wonder why you like called it cheesecake funk. And it turns out you were someone that had made some cheesecakes for Prince, which is pretty exciting. Welcome to the program. I'm dying to talk to you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk with you as well. Okay, so can you think of the very first time you thought of making cheesecakes as a business? You know, it was probably back, um, I was gifted a KitchenAid um, mixer. Yeah. And so that was kind of my starting of making desserts because I just, I've always liked to bake um And so I got this KitchenAid mixer and I just started making different things. I came across a cheesecake recipe and then I made it that year for, I don't know if it was probably Thanksgiving for my family. And everybody was like, oh my God, this cheesecake. And I was like, really? Like, oh, (laughs) that's great. And so then I tried to, I always, you know, would bring this cheesecake to like family, you know, gatherings and holidays. And I always try not to make it around the holidays, but then everybody kept pressing me like, well, where's the cheesecake? Right. And so I, at my best friend's house, I was not allowed in her house without bringing <laughs> the cheesecake. <laughs> so, um, you know, it just kind of grew into something that I just really felt a lot of joy with, with making for people. And I thought if, people liked it. And it's so cliche, but I always think if you build it, they will come. And, you know, it's, it's totally true. Like if I put the things in place in order for people to have easy access to my product, then why not go for it? And so I'm going for it. I love it. So the genesis of what, like, what year was that, that you decided like, okay, this is a business and not just a hobby or, or even like, maybe you started out as a cottage baker. Yeah. So, um, my backstory is I worked at, um, a really large law firm, um, in downtown Minneapolis for close to 20 years. And honestly, it was a lot of pushing with my legal friends that were like, you need to do this as a business. And I was like, really? And again, it's just people kept pressing me. And so I would say that was back in about 2016. I kind of got the bug for it. But um, 2018 is when I filled out the paperwork to get the LLC going. And then fast forward to August of 2019, I left my job and decided to do this full on. And I'm baking full time. Okay. So do you remember driving home? from your job, from your day that you've now left, Mm -hmm. what that felt like? Uh, It was such like a a scary but freeing moment. Um, At the time, my kids, I'm a single mom, and my kids were three and five. And I was like, oh my, like, if I'm going to do this, I'm doing this for us to like, they were about to start entering, um, you know, school. Yeah. And I just wanted to be there with them as they grew up. Um, and I just felt like if I can, if I can do this, I think I can do this. I just got to get a kitchen. I got to get ingredients and I just got to bake. And if I can do all that, then I'm going to go for it. And so it was really scary, but at the same time, like, a decision I don't regret whatsoever. And I'm so thankful that I did it. What do you think is one of the smartest things you did when you started your business besides having legal friends? Yeah. Right. (laughs) Um, honestly getting people involved that, um, will help me, um, with the business stuff. So like, you know, obviously financial, like taxes, you know, getting all that stuff lined up. Um, And um, a really good friend of mine, um, Casey Cornell, he helped me 
um, during the pandemic to redo my website. Um, he's with Oat Brands and, you know, we just kind of came together and he's like, you know, let's do a e-commerce site for you. And I was like, well, okay, well, you're the expert on that. And so my website is what it is because of him. And so I think getting people that can really, that knows the proper avenues in order to help you succeed is definitely key. Is it hard for you to ask for help? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I only ask yeah. that because it's, I'm terrible at it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like some people are good at it and some people aren't. And it seems like the people that aren't, sometimes people like almost ask you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, cause they yeah. see the need and they know that they could help you, but like, you're like, eh, I, I've just, I'm not great at it. So I was just curious cause I'd love to redo my website. And there's all these things that I'm like, I'm doing myself that I know I'm not great at. And I well, know I, I can get someone to do a better job. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. you just have to like reach out and ask people, I guess. And then I was with another woman who's a business owner that over the weekend and like, she asks all the time. She asks the smallest things, the biggest things and all the in-between things with no regret, no remorse. And people just come out of the woodwork to help her. It's crazy. Right. Right. And you know, women, owned businesses, I think it's really wonderful to feel the the connections with different women too that want to help. It's really yeah, awesome. for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Now is there something that was like the biggest mistake or just like a new business rookie situation where you were like, oh I can't believe I did that. Um you know it's it's hard to answer because I feel like I, you know, so I left my position at the end of 2019, um, August of 2019. So then I had the holiday season to really kind of get my feet set and then COVID hit. So then I, since then I've just really, it's kind of been like, is it fight or flight? Like just trying to do everything that I can in order to survive. Um, because one thing that has been challenging is, I kind of have felt invisible, like with the system, because I'm not a restaurant. Um, I don't provide a service to groups of people. Um, I'm not a healthcare worker, you know? So it's like, I've, I've never kind of fallen into a category where it's like, people can help me. I've just tried to, you know, find my way. Yeah. And so I think it's just finding my way during a crazy time has been challenging, but, um, I feel like I've made it and I'm still here. Yeah. So people go on your website yeah. and they order cheesecake. And then how does delivery happen? So I'm based out of the Minneapolis Marriott Southwest Hotel in Minnetonka. Um, I utilize their banquet kitchen. And so people go to my website, cheesecakefunk.com, and they pre-order. And I've been asking for anywhere between two to four business days notice in order to fulfill orders. Um, just because I don't want to bake a whole lot and then have extra. And honestly, I really like to have um, all my customers have like fresh quality, you know, cheesecake. So sure. I'm not going to make a banana cream cheesecake four days before somebody's going to eat it. You know, the whipped right. cream is made that morning um, or that day. So, um, so yeah, so they go online and uh, pre-order um, and then they can pick up here at the hotel. Um, I just ask people to let me know the specific day and time. And I'm generally pretty flexible um, on pickup times. Um, so yeah, they do that. And then I also supply to lots of restaurants aqua across the Twin Cities. And has that been a growing business since they've been coming out from the pandemic? I know I talked to one restaurant tour and it was like, you know, we used to have more like pastry chef people, but he was like, I can't really afford it now. So I just am bringing in the best local pastries I can. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's been a really kind of blessing in a way that I can help enhance their, you know, that small part of their menu with desserts, with, you know, providing the cheesecake and then their chefs top it. So I feel like it's like my creativity and my base product, but then, you know, the chefs are topping it really beautiful. Um, like you can find it all at all Crave restaurants. Um, the Butcher's Tale has it downtown, um, Oak Eatery, um, and also at Paisley Park too. But there's a lot of places that have it, but it's really nice to kind of collaborate. And I just really look forward to connecting with more restaurants um, so that they can kind of get the same, same idea. Yeah. So if anybody is a restaurant that's listening, that is an opportunity. 
um, yeah. to connect uh, with Vanessa to have cheesecake funk in your establishment. I just had this a piece of cheesecake at Butcher's Tail over the holiday season, and I didn't realize it was yours. It was fantastic. It was yeah, like one of the you. highlights of our meal, actually. Awesome. So great to hear. So you mentioned uh, Paisley Park. So can you tell us a little bit about that story and, and how your business got named? Um, you know, uh, I just think Prince is just such a blessing. Um, I, you know, of course, like so many people, big fan of Prince. Um, but I started working for him, um, selling merchandise back in 2013. And so it's like when you go to a concert and you see the merchandise set up, yeah, the merch table. Yeah, I was a merch girl. Um, so I would go there and set up merch. And, you know, at that point in 2013, I had been baking cheesecakes for so long, like got my mixer in 2002. So I, it was just like, I just wanted to bring a dessert for them to enjoy. Never did I want, I mean, of course, if it was there, he could have it, but I never thought that he would actually eat it. Um, but I would just bring it in and put it in the fridge for band members um, and staff to enjoy. And then one day Prince posted on um, Twitter uh, image of um, three monkeys and two monkeys were trying to resuscitate another one that had just like gone out. And it said, this is what happens when somebody eats the last piece of Vanessa's cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I knew that he had tried it and he liked it. And then um, he started um, posting international invitations to Paisley Park. Um, on his Twitter account um, so that people could see. And then within that, he would say, um, anything can happen, um, help yourself to some cheesecake funk. So with that, I was like, well, he's clearly talking about my cheesecake. And um, and so with that, the name was, was given. And, um, you know, I've really just been going with it with, you know, like, like I said, starting the LLC in 2019. And then just really um, connecting with various restaurants um, in order to make the leap of faith to leave my position. Yeah. I thought if I can connect with one and I had the ability to focus on it full time, then I'm going to go out there and get like 20 more restaurants and, you know, yeah. markets and whatnot. And, you know, that's where I'm at right now, just connecting with restaurants. And so that's kind of where the name came from. And uh, yeah. I remember when he followed me on Twitter and I didn't think it was him at first because I was like, well, this can't possibly be. But it turns out, I think he, I mean, he, he liked food and yes. I had a radio show about food and still do with my radio partner, Stephanie March. And I think he knew about us because he was following her too. So I oh, was like, great. and I was like, wow, I really think maybe this is legit. Like that he really is following because he wants to know what we're saying about, you know, eating in the Twin Cities and for sure. So, yeah. So that was kind of a, a big moment for me. Um, mm -hmm. When you think about going into 2023, are there like goals you have or things that you're working on specifically to try to grow your business? Yeah. You know, I'm really focused on, um, you know, of course, whatever means of growth there is, because I feel like there's so many different avenues my product can go into um, with connecting with more restaurants, with connecting directly with more customers, especially like around the holiday seasons, um, like Easter is always a big deal. So I get a lot of Easter orders and, you know, the summertime. So I feel like connecting those ways. And then also I really would like to start connecting maybe with co-packers or some means so that maybe a, a machine is producing my product, but of course, with the same quality that I do making it by hand. So um, that's kind of a big task, but um, I definitely feel like there's so many products of desserts in grocery stores and just around where that is the case for their product. And so I just need to try to see if I can get my way in there. Yeah. If there's anyone listening that knows of any co packers that would be good for this type of product or dairy, um, mm -hmm. feel free to reach out to Vanessa. I know co-packing is a big decision and it Very. can take a long time to do like the research and development with just the right co-packer that can make the product in exactly the way, but it is for a sustainability situation long-term, potentially the way to go for you. Mm -hmm. um, also, it might allow you to do things like sell through Amazon and some other larger opportunities. And you can always have like, someone talked about once, um, and it was in a baked good too, like they had different levels. So they had like a premium product 
and then they had like uh, uh they called it their homestead version mm -hmm. so that the premium product maybe was a little smaller or they made some differentiations between it yeah but they always had the ability to create and customize something from scratch for someone that was a local person or an original supporter whatever that would be and like with grubhub now and um doordash and places uh gold belly you know maybe mm -hmm. that would be a possibility too yeah i definitely have tried to venture in with gold belly but i can't get them to return my call <laughs> you I know wonder but why i you know i think they're really busy um yeah. but you know that is another kind of avenue also that i'd like to jump into is being able to ship my product um but you know, also connecting with the proper shipping channels of like, it has to go overnight and it has to be a decent price yep. of overnight shipping and the packaging itself to sustain sending um, a cream cheese product. Yep. So that would be wonderful too, to try to seal that in because I get reached out by people from all over the United States who want me to ship it to like Florida and New York or, you know, LA, but I would love to um, I have shipped it to some celebrities too, yep. but it's super expensive and yeah. it's just not feasible. <laughs> yeah. If you're not a celebrity person, maybe that's kind of hard to justify. Yeah. Um, on a baking side of questions, mm -hmm. how do you keep cheesecake from cracking? Uh, over mixing it. So when it's cracked, it means you're over mixing. You've over mixed it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. how, because I think a lot of people crack and a lot of people over mix. So is it just a, because you've done enough of them, you have like a sense of the feel of the texture? So I think um, the key thing is um, creaming the, the cream cheese and sugar. So if you get that kind of going, so it's super silky smooth, it's just a matter of beating the eggs in briefly and then quickly mixing that together. But okay. I think- I mean, you could put the thing on and have it whip the cream cheese and sugar for a long time, I think. And then I don't think you get lots of cracks if you just whip the other things very briefly. Yeah. Okay. So it's also how you order the ingredients. Because yeah. I I like cheesecake. I'm not great at making it. I've made a few, but mm -hmm. they always crack. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's just over mixing. Because I, I noticed when I over mix, I totally get cracks in them and you know, then you can always cover it with like chocolate or bananas sure. or whatever, but, um, but it's always kind of really fulfilling to not get a crack. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever tried, um, I made a goat cheese cheesecake. It was part goat cheese and part cream cheese. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a lot lighter kind of texture. It was really mm -hmm. delicious, but might be yeah, I haven't made one, but I've had one before, um, over at, um, oh gosh, place over Northeast, um, you guys did the cookbook swap over there. Oh, at uh, Malcolm Yards? Yes. Yep. Yes. They have a cheesecake. I think that's similar to that. When yeah. you um, when you are thinking of flavors, mm -hmm. like how do you, is it hard to come up with seasonal flavors? And is that a big part of your strategy? Or do you like to just kind of stick with five to 10? Um, well, I think right now I currently have about 14 flavors. Um, but honestly, I think it's just a matter of getting the cheesecake base down and then simply adding to it. So I've kind of been teetering on adding like a caramel pecan um, because that you just add the caramel to it and top it yep. with you know, caramel and pecans. Um, so it's really just kind of making it very simple, but very decadent um, and not over the top, but just kind of simple and good quality ingredients too. Um, I am a big fan. I'm excited to talk to you. It's been really fun to get to know you. Um, are there like books that you've read about entrepreneurism or like websites that you visit or blogs that you look at on a weekly basis? Um, you know, I listen to, um, how they built this Yes, with Guy Raz a lot. Yep. Um, and then I listen to your shows all the time, Thank um, you. especially on Monday mornings, because, you know, I'm in the kitchen cooking. And so I kind of zone out listening to different food podcasts. Yep. Um, another favorite one is um, Food Network Obsessed. Have you heard of that? No. It's a Food Network um, podcast where okay. um, this woman interviews like lots of people. She's done like Bobby Flay. Sure. Um, like all the Food Network gems. Um, so it's kind of neat to listen. I to would that. like that. Yeah. Um, 
And, you know, it's, I think Guy Raz is, is kind of the main one. Um, and just kind of, I try to find new things to listen to that will help me um, kind of boost, boost things rather than yeah. just, you know. Are there chefs that you admire? You mentioned the Food Network folks, and obviously yeah. we all kind of, because they were the first. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I love Bobby Flay. Um, Zoe Francois, I yes. love what she's doing. I've never met her, but I just oh, love we'll what have she's to doing. Meet, she's wonderful. We'll have to yeah. get you guys to meet sometime. Yeah, and of course, Joanna Gaines. Um, yes. I love all what she's doing. Um, Barefoot Contessa, like, come on. I know, she's... Um, her recipes are solid. They never fail. They mm -hmm. always work. Yeah. She's not like as flashy as some of the other people, but boy, she's solid. Yeah. And then um, another favorite of mine. Um, oh, her name is blanking me. Um, oh, golly. She's, I can't think of it, of course, on the spot. She, um, I, I can't think of it right now. She's okay. a chef in, she does milk bar. Oh, um, uh, Christina Tassi. Yes. Yes. She is so amazing. And I love watching, um, on Netflix, the, the stories that she has on there. It's super inspiring. Yeah. All yeah. right. I'm going to yeah. check that out too. Um, do you watch like the great British bake off and all those? Yeah. Yeah. yeah me too. Yeah. 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 All right, Vanessa. Well, it was super great to talk to you. It's Cheesecake Funk at cheesecakefunk.com where people can order and they'll pick up at the Southwest Marriott. And if any restaurant tours are listening or people that want to actually uh, create partnerships with you, how would you like them to connect with you? Um, they can always um, send me an email at uh, info at cheesecakefunk.com. Um, send me a DM on Instagram. Um, I try to be very active on Instagram. So that's kind of fun to see all the little things I'm doing with cheesecakes um, on there as well. Yeah. Your Instagram is real fun. And I mean, it's just such a wonderful product. It really lends itself to all that delicious photography. So great job. Thank you for being with me today. It's really nice to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you too. Thanks, Vanessa. We'll talk okay. soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.